Alright, let's be honest. The Smash Bros. series is kind of in an awkward position. Smash Ultimate is just so hard to top. The culmination of two decades worth of characters, stages, music, all being jammed into this teeny tiny Switch cartridge is mind-blowing. The Smash Bros. series has seen an unbelievable transformation over the last two decades. It went from the dinky little fighting game that almost never got made to an absolute juggernaut. The gaming world as a whole stands still for a moment every time a new Smash character gets revealed, even if they don't really play the game. Smash has evolved to become a celebration of gaming as a whole, with hundreds of series represented. If your series finds its way into Smash, even in the tiniest of ways, you can safely say, look ma, I made it. But being the pea-brained animals that we are, once something is over, we immediately jump to what's next. There's just so much possibility and so much uncertainty with the next Smash game. Do we completely reboot the franchise? Do we keep it going from the foundation Ultimate built? Do characters get cut, or does Nintendo need to go haggle with Square Enix again? Heck, the series could get a whole new director. The creator of Smash, Masahiro Sakurai, has stated that he can't foresee a future Smash game without his involvement, but that doesn't necessarily mean he would take the reins and once again direct the next Smash game. Maybe a new director and new team would develop the game, and Sakurai pops in occasionally to offer advice, more like a consultant than a developer. Well, Sakurai's employment status aside, in this video, we're gonna dive into the future of Smash and what I think it could possibly look like. Alright, so first off, everything I'm about to say could be moot, because there is a non-zero possibility that we just get Smash Ultimate Deluxe. Nintendo has really been on a deluxe remastered kick lately. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Metroid Prime Remastered, the entire Pikmin series, the list just goes on. So hypothetically, when the next console comes out, the Switch Pro or Switch 2 or whatever it ends up being, it wouldn't surprise me at all for Smash Ultimate Deluxe to launch alongside it, bundled with all of the DLC and everything. Maybe it gets its own DLC, like the Booster Pass course. Maybe it doesn't. But a deluxe version of Smash would definitely buy them time to figure out what the actual future of the series is. Today's video is sponsored by Battle Crush, a brand new PvP brawler action game available on Switch, Steam, and smartphones. Battle Crush puts you in a 30-man lobby with the goal of being the sole survivor at the end of the game. You pick your Calyxer, find items and gear to help you survive, and traverse through the collapsing battlefield, fighting your opponents along the way. The controls are crazy simple, but you can do so much with them. Light attacks, heavy attacks, dodge attacks that allow you to counter, and of course, an ultimate attack. There are multiple game modes. Battle Royale, the 30-man last man standing mode, Brawl, where you choose three Calyxers to battle, and Build Up, a 1v1 mode. Battle Crush's beta launches October 23rd and will be available on Steam, Switch, and Android. And if you redeem my coupon code, you can even get 1,000 crystals absolutely free. So make sure you sign up for the beta today and join us on the battlefield from October 23rd to the 30th. Now I know I'm not the first person to come up with this. This isn't even my first time talking about it. But it stands to reason that if they aren't going to build upon Ultimate's roster, then they really just need to trim it down. Fighting game rosters often fluctuate in sizes for a variety of reasons, but one of the biggest downsides of having such a huge roster is that balancing the roster becomes an almost impossible task. It's why you'll find other fighting games have a small base game roster so they can really focus on the characters they do have, going for quality over quantity. And that's not to say Smash isn't quality, but the size of this roster would undoubtedly wear the dev team a bit thin. But it's not enough to just trim down the roster for the sake of balance. If they took the characters as they are in Ultimate and just removed a bunch, that would be totally pointless. I think the best thing they could do is a total rework of nearly every character. The difference between Smash characters at some points is hilarious. The later characters in Smash all have special mechanics developed just for them. Limit gauge, a mining system, unique inputs, 30 unique special moves, and then there's Donkey Kong, who hasn't had any significant changes since Smash 64. I get that they wanted to keep the returning characters similar from game to game so that the fans of those characters wouldn't be disappointed, but when you look at the original 12, even Melee and some Brawl characters, and then compare them to the later characters, I mean it's like they're from two completely different games. Even Link, who was given an update to match Breath of the Wild, really didn't get anything earth-shattering. 
You can remote activate his bomb now, and he gets that funny double arrow thing, and that's all they did. It's like they were scared to change the character too much, which is hilarious considering both Young and Toon Link covered that moveset perfectly already. So yeah, give the characters who stay total overhauls. Give Mario Cappy actually make a Breath of the Wild Link, or even Tears of the Kingdom at this point. Make Sonic not just ball the character. If it takes a tiny roster to bring a huge refresh to the characters that do stay, I'd totally be down. Along with this, it gives the opportunity for the DLC of the game to be a really cool mix of returning and brand new fighters. Plenty of characters are still requested to this day for Smash, and of course in a fresh slate, people would hope the old faces would return as well. That was kind of how Smash 4's DLC worked. We got three veterans and then four newcomers. That mixture is pretty cool, and I think that they could do it one of two ways. Either alternate releases, with a newcomer followed by a veteran, then back to a newcomer, or release the characters in waves of two, a newcomer and a veteran at the same time. I know it kind of feels like retreading the ground that Ultimate laid for us, but you just know that someone is going to be unnecessarily furious that Corrin isn't playable. Man, I don't know. Being a Smash YouTuber for so long, you'd think I'd be better at answering the question, what characters do you want in Smash? But off the cuff, my mind just kinda shuts down. Crash Bandicoot is the first name that always jumps out to me though. I was late to the Crash party, I was always more of a Spyro guy growing up, but looking back it's clear that Crash really was the Mario of the PlayStation, even making those commercials trash talking outside Nintendo HQ. Crash has of course been on all of the major consoles since those days, but it would be such a cool full circle moment to see Crash join the wacky Mario fighting game. Chibi Robo has been all but abandoned by Nintendo that he kind of exists in a weird no man's land as a Smash rep. He somehow feels like a fusion of a retro rep and a modern-ish rep at the same time. An often forgotten character like the Ice Climbers, but still new enough like a villager or Olimar. Honestly, I just feel bad for the character and his fans, so just, just throw him in there. Waluigi. Now I think Waluigi would be awesome for Smash. He's such a lanky, silly guy that it truly would be fun to see. But if anything, if anything, Nintendo, it would finally silence everyone everywhere on the internet. We could finally have a conversation without it devolving into Waluigi being in Smash. I also think that some assist trophies could definitely be promoted up to a full fighter. Skull Kid, Bomberman, Shovel Knight, Shadow. So many of these definitely have the potential to be fighters. Any one of them getting the bump up would be nice. I don't really have much to say with regards to stages. I like the pattern established in Ultimate, where a new series rep comes with one new stage and some music. I like the way most stages are designed. In recent years, I've come around to the wackiness that a lot of Smash stages bring, just as long as it's not too overwhelming. Being able to turn off stage hazards is also a huge plus, which is something I really hope returns. Between a hazard toggle and the Omega and Battlefield forms, I feel like Smash Ultimate offers a ton for both casual and more competitive fans, so really all I can hope for in a future Smash game is that they continue to strike that balance. I don't know if Nintendo or Sakurai are just allergic to the idea, but they've always had one foot in, one foot out when it comes to costumes. There's Hero, who gets four totally unique character models, each with vibrant and distinct color swaps, and then Sonic, who is blue. I just wish they would commit. The Smash modding scene across all games has long since proven that every character has some kind of source material that can inspire costumes. Whole communities have been created to find every little appearance of characters for the sole purpose of creating costumes. People have loved the meme mods, like Shrek or Among Us, but I always love giving characters proper outfits that could be seen in an official title. From the obvious, like Toon Link in his pajamas, to the obscure, like a low-poly PS1-style snake. I mean, look, modders gave Kirby human feet. Nintendo can definitely just give Mewtwo his armor. It just feels so bizarre, especially now that we've seen them do this for other games. Mario Kart Tour has an absurd amount of costumes in it, for example. I just wish they would take like half of that inspiration and apply it to a Smash game. Whether these costumes are in the game or just basic DLC, it feels so strange that in all of Smash, the Mi Fighters are the only characters to receive any kind of downloadable costume. Nintendo, you could really steal my money. I love cosmetics in games. One of the biggest wishes ever since Brawl is that each Smash game would have a campaign like Subspace Emissary. And yeah, I agree. Subspace was awesome, but it wasn't perfect. 
I feel like when it comes to single player modes, Smash has always just barely missed the mark. Subspace was awesome, seeing the character interactions, platforming through these areas, and watching the story unfold. But the actual world was just nothing. Generic battlefields and ruins and space hell. World of Light was cool conceptually. The creativity of the fights and the idea of the story were both really great. But it just went on far too long. There wasn't really anything cohesive tying it all together, and eventually you just kinda got tired of the spirit mode. And Melee's adventure mode, yeah, it was basic, meant to be only like 10 to 15 minutes long, but it actually had recognizable Nintendo locales. You start in the Mushroom Kingdom, navigate a Zelda dungeon, escape from the iPhone alarm sound in a Metroid-style climb. This is what I'd expect from a Nintendo fighter. So the ideal single-player campaign would be to take all these ideas and throw them all together. Give us a subspace level campaign with character interactions, but actually have it take place in areas of the Nintendo universe. I want to see Pokemon in the Mushroom Kingdom, Samus in Hyrule, Bowser terrorizing Animal Crossing villagers, and then take a little bit of World of Light's quirky fights and throw them in there. Don't really overdo it, but fights that have different rules or mechanics are actually really fun in small bursts. Nintendo does that, and it would be the peak single player experience. If they're gonna continue using Echo Fighters, they should actually just use Echo Fighters. They went through all the trouble of describing Echo Fighters to us ahead of Ultimate, and then they made a grand total of seven of them. People were sure an Echo Pack was on its way, and some people were really creative with them. It's just another thing where I felt like they had one foot in, one foot out. I really hope they keep Classic Mode the way it was done in Smash Ultimate. Creating a unique path for each character that represents them or their series was such a unique spin in a formula that was becoming a little stale. Most of the routes are fantastic. There are some, of course, that could be a bit better, but overall, the concept is just perfect. I can only assume that Spirit Battles won't be a returning feature in the next Smash game, and I think that Spirit Battles and Ultimate probably held Classic Modes back. So I think for the next game, it would be awesome if they took the best aspects of Spirit Mode, plopped them in Classic Mode, and like really committed to it, and gave each character one of the perfect routes for Classic Mode. But one thing above all that has to be in a new Smash, bring back Pokefloats, you cowards.